Hey guys, my name's Elia. We're excited to be here today for a LinkedIn live session with a, a couple of our friends and, and fellow coworkers. Uh, and uh, yep, we're just extremely excited to be here. It's December. It's uh, late into the year. It's getting to the holiday season, and uh, we thought, you know, we've had some good traction with uh, one of our our friends and partners at the Ignite Brewing Company uh, with some technology we put in place over the summer. So we thought that. You know, we're here in December. Let's check back in, see how things are going. Uh, some lessons learned that we can share with other people that own small businesses um, throughout the country. And it happens to be Thursday. So, you know, in the spirit of Thirsty Thursdays and a brewing company, you know, how else could we have some fun and learn about technology together? So uh, my name, just to kick it off, is Ilya Elyashevsky. I work on a digital innovation team here at Insight. Uh, I actually have a really cool job where I get to play with a lot of fancy technology and emerging technology from our partners. Uh, we work a lot in, in partnership with Microsoft, uh, who, who has also been uh, helping with some of these deployments and some of the technology that we're using. And then, uh, you know, we got to tinker with some things. So COVID is really thrown a curveball into 2020 plans. You know, we were focused on IoT technologies for smart restaurants and how to how to increase sales and drive customer traffic. And then March hit and we kind of took a hard pivot and said, okay, what, what's going on in the world and, and what kind of technologies can we pull together to help just make customers feel safe and, and utilize technology to drive data decisions and, and see what's going on. So I'm joined here today with uh, four friends. I'll call them friends, but we got partners, we got teammates, uh, we've got clients, um, but we have Megan and Michael from the Ignite Brewing Company, and we have Paul and Jake uh, from the Insight team. Um, Guys, you want to just say hi, we'll do kind of a more formal introduction in a section, but I'll just set the stage and then we'll can kind of go through what you guys do on your daily basis. Um, so we'll, I think we'll start off with more of a spoiler, but just to set the stage of what we're doing uh, in this LinkedIn Live session, what we'll be covering is we put in uh, thermal cameras uh, over the summer in the Ignite Brewing Company, um, which enabled them to kind of screen their customers and their employees to, to detect for you know symptoms of COVID, uh, and then that helps ideally prevent the spread of the disease. But you know, no one really knows what we're getting into or how all this technology is going to come together. It's kind of new territory for everyone, so it's been a learning lesson, some tweaking together. But at least we're we're trying to kind of make a, a safer place, uh, you know, that drives uh, customers back through the doors or outside. They have a lot of cool, uh, fun areas. Um, I'm thinking we'll we'll probably just kick off with an overview to kind of show what we've done. And then the goal of this LinkedIn Live session is to actually dive a little bit deeper into the data insights now that it's been set up uh, over the summer, compare those trends to what's going on in the last couple of weeks, you know, how are things going, what have we learned, um, and just, just look at the data and, and take a deeper look than what you can kind of see in a two-minute video. In addition, uh, we'll work in, we'll kind of have a discussion with uh, Jake and Paul who actually are the people that coordinate with the partners. How do we get hardware? How do we ship it to the right locations? How do we run cabling and install it and then configure cameras and get that data pumped into our Insight Connected platform? So we'll do a little bit of an open panel discussion of uh, some of the stuff that they do day in and day out uh, for clients kind of in the US, but really globally uh, in many cases. And then we'll look at kind of what's what's on the horizon. You know, it's December, ideal world is we have vaccines soon and you know, no one really thought that this situation would be lasting as long as it does. But, you know, what are we looking for as we move into 2021? Um, some new technologies that uh, hopefully won't necessarily just be COVID related, but it'll also be like, how, how can we drive better business results and outcomes? So we'll, we'll set the stage, we'll come back in, we'll introduce everybody. Uh, and it is Thirsty Thursday, so we'll also maybe crack open a beer so we can have this as a casual conversation. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's quickly pull up the video of, of what we did over the summer uh, to kind of help everyone understand what, what's going on. The art of craft beer is a very intellectually curious topic. Having a beer with community is what craft beer is all about. We're trying to always look for new ways to bring technology in to help us get better. And it's exciting to have Insight as a partner to help us with that because they've got the great technology that they're bringing to the table that we can implement. 
So Insight is a global systems integrator. We really focus on complex enterprise solutions. The Insight IoT Connected Platform provides one holistic view into that IoT ecosystem to really control, monitor, and manage, and make decisions upon your IoT ecosystem. Prior to COVID, we were in discussions and we were utilizing some of the tools and technology with Insight from the temperature monitoring of our beverage coolers and different critical components that we need to have eyes and ears on. With the COVID pandemic, it really kind of shifted and they understood quickly that they could introduce what we call detect and prevent type use cases. So really putting things like thermal cameras on for temperature reading that really are gonna help detect certain COVID related instances and also prevent to a certain extent the further spread of the disease. The approach we took was if I'm not comfortable going there, if I wouldn't take my family here, then why would I expect a customer to come here? So what Insight kind of brought for us was a way to take monitoring that we were already doing and really brought another level of it that let us monitor the health and safety of our customers and our staff as well. We were able to quickly pivot using an IoT platform for temperature control that was originally for food safety items is now temperature control relating to humans. We didn't have to have an on-site visit. We were able to measure certain things, help them build out the specs that they needed all via Teams. I want this tool to work for our towns, our local schools, our local businesses. I think organizations are really trying to figure out how they can provide a safe environment, not only for their workers, but also for clientele. We are trusted on a daily basis to deliver a safe environment and having the tools with Insight, with Microsoft, to deliver greater safety is, is paramount. All right, and we're back. So hopefully that's, that's kind of the background for some of the cool stuff that we've done. And, and now we can dive a little bit more uh, deeper into who's on the call, what you guys are up to. And I think we'll just go in batting order here. Um, so Megan, uh, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, let the audience know who you are and what you do day in and day out. Sure. My name is Megan Slater. I'm one of the partners with Ignite Brewing Company. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I help operations run. I've got facilities, I've got the beer production, um, any of the kind of background things that really keep the building and the business functioning uh, kind of fall to me to help coordinate and get the right team in the right place as we need them. Cool. And I think for this segment, since we, you know, lots of people doing lots of webinars, but we also wanted to crack open beers and explain what everyone's drinking today. So ladies first, you know, why don't you, you know, you're the brewmaster and you kind of know a lot more about beer, but why don't you tell everyone what you're going to drink and, uh, and then we can kind of go around the horn. Sure. So today I'm having our brand new release. It's coming on today. It's called The Blessing. It's a little nod to Aunt Bethany and uh, the Christmas season. It's a cranberry pomegranate goes, which is super refreshing. And uh, having gotten to sample a little bit last night, it might become my new favorite. It sounds delicious. Now I'm jealous and my, my taste buds are watering. So um, <laughs> Michael, you want to uh, kind of explain what you do and same deal. And I think you guys are in the brewery, you know, so what we saw on the video, you know, this is your, this is your baby and it's your spot. So. Yeah. Um, so on a day job, day in and day out basis uh, with, with the brewery, uh, strategic planning sales and the taproom experience are kind of the main items I lead uh, on a day to day out basis. So um, I, we do have uh, other jobs, of course, and uh, as well as a lot of involvement in the community. But uh, as, as it relates to Ignite, that's where I spend a, a lot of my time. As for beverage of choice, it is uh, Ignite's uh, Blonde Barista. It's uh, our Guatemalan whole bean coffee infused into a nice blonde ale. So it's a perfect, perfect compliment to uh, the afternoon post-lunch uh, drag, if you will. So a little bit of coffee, a little bit of caffeine, it'll be a delicious way to navigate the conversation. So cheers, guys. Awesome. And that's perfect. And just disclaimer, you know, we are all on the East Coast, so it is after lunchtime. So it's totally acceptable be, to be drinking at work and during work hours. Um, okay, uh, Jake, you want to uh, introduce yourself? Oh, you're on mute there, Jake. 
It would help if I uh, unmuted. Uh, I'm Jake Krantz. I'm the client engagement manager with uh, Insight, uh, working with Ignite. Um, my job pretty much is uh, 50% project management, 50% matchmaker, and 100% problem solver. Um, so it's been really fun working with Ignite, kind of you know blasting through any roadblocks we had and setting this up, working with partners on the back end to get their uh, equipment. Um, yeah, and just making sure that this was a successful project. Um, and for the beer I'm drinking, unfortunately, we didn't get Ignite here in, in Atlanta, so I'm sticking a little bit closer to home. Uh, I got Creature Comforts uh, Tropicalia, which is a nice fruity IPA. Um, actually, one of my favorite go-to beers. Uh, it's, it's something I drink almost well, almost daily. It's a good choice. Nice. And to you, Paul. Uh, yes, Paul Nicewinger. Uh, I've got responsibility for our national deployments, uh, managed services, and everything else with Insight. Um, so when you think about uh, solutions, buying products um, and services together, we kind of join those in a solution motion. Um, we've got, uh, just uh, for a reference point, we've done 40,000 deployments um, annually. So we, we've got a lot of activity. And I don't get to drink a beer because we have that much activity. Um, I've got hundreds of employees and I don't get the uh, luxury to drink in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. You know, it's actually probably responsible, but uh, I did get full, uh, you know, approval and by full approval I, I asked myself and I said I think this is a good idea and we should definitely do it so uh, for me uh, I'm in Connecticut so I went with a new a double New England IPA um, we'll hold it up to the camera it's not it's not ignite but actually it's a half it's from a, another you know half full brewery but it's got Ignite is the actual, you know, branding for this beer. So I thought it was very fitting. And even more so, there's a little campfire on there. And from what I understand, the Ignite teams put, uh, you know, some fireplaces. So it seemed like the perfect choice uh, to kind of start our afternoon together. So we'll do a, a quick cheers and, you know, head nod to Paul. Um, you know, thanks for joining, guys. Hopefully we can make this a little bit more fun and an open discussion without, you know, kind of just going through a ton of PowerPoint slides and, and reading text. So cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. And I did debate pouring it into a glass, but then I figured people could see if it's going, you know, how quickly it might be going down. So we'll we'll try to go along. Um, all right. So two two other disclaimers, and then we can kind of get into the dis, uh, the discussion. So one, as we all know, you know, some I'm working remotely. You guys are still trying to manage your business uh, day in and day out, and and kind of keep customers everything's changing on a daily basis. So what, what can we do about that? My disclaimer is I've got, you know, it just came in the mail. I've got my Christmas cards that are ordered and, and going to be shipping out soon. But on them, I've got four kids. These four kids are going to arrive home off the bus right in the middle of this discussion. So I have no promises for the, the loudness we tried. Um, hopefully they're going to be kind of tame, but they're four elementary school kids that, uh, could be a little rowdy. So we'll kind of take this conversation. We'll see how it Welcome goes. Welcome to 2020. Welcome to 2020. <laughs> and I completely feel the urge to go to breweries, you know, if they're kind of safely and everything's in order, especially here in Connecticut. We have we have some small uh, shops in our, in our area as well. So uh, support your local business this holiday season. I think it's a very key message. Um, you know, everybody's trying their best to keep everyone safe. There's a lot of hard work going in. Um, so I think everyone can appreciate that. Um, so, you know, Megan and, and Michael, we, we thank you for having you guys here. And we, we really hope you, you know, can kind of this holiday season works out as good as it can. So if we if we move on with the agenda. Well, uh, you know, the, the focus of this is really like, how do we keep uh, employees and customers safe? So we'll just chat over having a, a couple of sips of a drink and, and explain what we put in exactly and how that works um, and some of the data and the results that we're that we're kind of seeing. So just to set the stage, I know the video kind of did a great job of showing people and seeing the installation, but Michael or Megan, you want to kind of maybe just uh, set, you know, let the audience know how you guys are set up, some of the things that you've been doing over the last few months uh, at, at your facilities. Yeah, um, Megan, I'll start off and please jump in. Uh, we took, uh, we identified this location uh, a couple of years ago. It was an old 
BF Goodrich Tire Garage, um, completely dead for effectively a decade plus in our main drag in our downtown. And part of our mission was how do we work with the community, um, dr drive community and economic impact and make sure that we're a, a draw to outside areas. So uh, this location, 5,000 square foot uh, tire shop with 25 foot high ceilings and all that fun stuff, pre-installed garage bays, which is tremendous. And uh, it's the only building in downtown that came along with the parking lot. So we've been able to convert that. You see the, the nice fronted uh, gated area, if you will. Um, that location was built out last year. That was the only spot that you could uh, consume uh, alcohol outside for a permit. Um, one of the many shifts we made this year was to quickly take that back half of the parking lot and uh, get that fenced in. Um, there's cabling and, and things that's hard to see in this picture, but ultimately we're able to double the size of the patio. So we've got uh, 5,000 square feet inside, 6,000 outside. Um, that's great, great outdoor, uh, easy space to, to spend time and hang out. Uh, Megan, anything else to add there? Yeah, well, the one thing with the patio is that it was a constantly evolving um, space that we would kind of get feedback and see what was the right answer, what do we need to do next. And uh, we got many, many comments from folks because we kept our tables well spaced. We had six feet in between all of our tables. You can see it in the picture. Um, last summer, we would have had all the tables you see on just the nice concrete side. And to try and make sure everyone felt good coming here, even though it was outside, we took all those tables and we kind of blew them apart and spaced them out um, to the to the six foot minimum so that people could sit um, and then have that space. One of the upsides, which we hadn't anticipated and was a comment made more than once, is that people enjoyed the distance because they didn't have to listen to others' conversations, which maybe was the one positive to come out of social distancing or physical <laughs> spacing is you could go somewhere and not have to listen to that table next door that was really annoying and talking about something kind of strange. Right, right. Yeah, totally. And I think that's like kind of a lesson that we're all learning together that you know, it's forcing us to look into new technologies, look into new ways that we run our business. And then there are some positive, you know, side effects of, of, of this, you know, if you kind of look at the silver linings. Um, I when you can. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, we, we're all, we're all in this together. I know we, we have a partnership as well with Intel and they sent out these shirts, but like, you know, that is one of the themes that, you know, we're all kind of figuring this out together and then sharing our kind of lessons learned so that um, hopefully the audience here today maybe takes a tidbit or said, oh, that's a good idea. Or I'd like to learn more. Um, so that's really kind of the theme here. It's, it's not anything specific like, hey, buy this now. It's more, hey, this is what's going on. These are some things that we tried. These are things we've learned. And we've, we've done that quite a bit over the last few months with a lot of our clients because everybody's setting up their own task force and trying to figure out what do we do and what's working and what's not working. Okay, um, perfect. So uh, just moving along, what I'll explain, and I'll just take a, a couple of moments, um, is so Mike and Megan, they bring the beer, they bring the location, they kind of bring the customers. <clears throat> what Insight's bringing is we have our a connected platform, which is an IoT-based uh, platform that's really uh, designed to scale and handle multiple locations and in different industries and in different use cases. And we bring together different you know, partner products that can kind of integrate into it. Um, but at, at the core, and to keep it the simplest, it, it's always just about like, how do we manage the people, the places, the things, the dings, the insights, you know, like every IoT project that I've worked on and, and no matter what kind of industry or client, that's kind of the core that we have to kind of figure out using this system and who's at these places and what type of uh, connected devices are we installing? And then we have a, a connected platform that kind of handles a lot of that, like the roles and permissions for people, like who's getting access to the data coming off of these devices or who's managing this type of solution. So the, the great benefit of, of our connected platform is it actually can aggregate different partner solutions into one mobile optimized. It'll also work on desktop and laptops or, or even tablets, but you know, give data at the fingertips. So kind of looking at the Ignite use case to make it kind of rooted in, in something on, on the left side is our, our people management. And when we're dealing with COVID, um, you know, it, it, we had started off when, you know, food safety and you have temperature sensors that you're installing into restaurants and, um, you know, just to monitor like our, our fridges and freezers operating appropriately so that the food and the quality is maintained. 
And then you get into like, well, thermal cameras for screening people. And that's maybe more of a security or an, even an HR use case, um, which is new territory. Um, and a lot of the, the, com the comments we've had, but we can separate, you know, a temperature sensor that's in a beer cooler from a thermal camera and then give the right people the right access and even send the data to the right people at the right time. For the middle panel, that's places. So the Ignite Brewing Company is uh, located in Barberton, Ohio. Um, you know, it's one location, uh, but if you're managing multiple locations, like how do you do that um, if you're a large chain? And as, as Paul mentioned, we're quite busy. So, it, you know, the solution can scale up from, you know, your small mom and pop shop to, you know, people like McDonald's, right? That you're, they've got 25,000 restaurants and how do they manage it? And you've got regional directors. So the framework set here that we can give access to the people that are on site you know, the data they need for their site. If you're managing a region of, of locations, you can get data from them. Uh, and you can kind of drill down or, you know, zoom back out to kind of get the right level of insights uh, across the board. And I'll even give an example of what we're doing uh, with our own insight offices and some of the thermal cameras and, and kiosks that we've set up as we as we return to work ourselves. Uh, the the middle screen is just kind of an aggregated view of how you'll see what devices do we actually deploy. So Jake orders them up, Ignite's like, hey, these are things we're interested in. Paul goes and installs them. You know, but the, the connected platform will kind of actually aggregate all those together. So as a smart brewing company that's implementing different uh, technology, you can see what different technology did we put in place and what's kind of what data is being generated for it. And then really, we don't want anyone to use our app. We kind of wanted it just to work, set it, and forget it. Uh, seems kind of like a weird thing to say, but it, it's really the the usage is going to be driven by in the event that something happened and a certain threshold is hit, or you know, set out an alert that says notify me when this happens. And that could be my my freezer is running too cold or too hot or too warm or whatever, or it could be in this case um, a thermal camera and it, it picks up like a, an elevated temperature that might need a, a second look um, to see what's going on. Um, and then the last is we just aggregate insights. We really want to drive business outcomes. So it's less about just putting in technology for technology safety, but we're making it easy and at your fingertips to kind of get a gauge uh, of what's going on today. How did that compare to yesterday? What kind of data insights? So you kind of see trending over time. Are we moving in the right direction as we put in different technology and solutions and even just people flow management? Um, and, and that helps us run a smarter, a smarter business. So moving on, that's our that's our connected platform. Um, that's uh, what our digital innovation team. But if we look at kind of just some of the results that we had seen over the summer, just to kind of show the data that once you get these things deployed, and then we'll we'll, we'll talk about how we deploy them, kind of what's going on. So, you know, Michael and Megan, feel free to jump in. But you know, I thought it was interesting. You know, when we put these cameras in in uh, August, kind of this August to September range, after we did some fine tuning and tweaking just to kind of say like, well, what's happening? Um, you wanna kind of walk through just the, the stats here and, and you know, give a, a quick overview? Um, sure, I, so these numbers are from the August, September timeframe and um, because we had the patio, there were definitely a lot more customers that we had. So the scan numbers were significantly higher than we're seeing now, unfortunately, with the uh, continued COVID responses and the shutdowns, um, the scans have definitely dropped off. The interesting things that we saw, um, and one of the things that kind of caught my attention was even the elevated temps detected. A lot of the time you're getting the same person or the same object multiples because they walk through the camera a couple different times or it picks them up in two different places when they first enter the view of the camera and then they come up to the bar itself. So even the number 20, while it looks like, oh my gosh, 20 people, um, it's not actually 20 people. It, it is um, a far smaller number even than that because there are multiples of the same person because the camera works so quickly and is just grabbing the information as it goes by without discerning is it the same person or not. So that was one of the interesting things that we've kind of learned. Uh, the other thing that has been different now compared to the summer is with our garage door not open anymore, we're not picking up a lot of the heat from the patio. Turns out the sun is really, really warm and uh, the concrete and the tables and the chairs and the people wearing hats um, grab sunglasses. a lot of that heat, sunglasses. We were really also kind of surprised and it was a learning experience that baseball hats um, grab a lot of heat 
they actually flare up as being a very high temperature because that fabric holds that heat in, um, which was surprising. So it's it's been a great learning experience and uh, it's running really smoothly now, um, especially because the garage door is closed and we're not getting that sun effect that we were originally seeing. Michael, you got anything else to maybe throw at that? No, I think that's great. Great summary. Yeah. And, and Jake, maybe just to broaden the view, like I know you've been working with some grocery chains and, and different corporate headquarters and doing a lot of these deployments along with Paul, like any other tidbits that we've learned kind of along the way of, and we can kind of dive into the actual camera models and some of that stuff a little bit later, but from other deployments, are there common themes there? Yeah. I, I, the, the biggest common theme environmental, um, the environmental surroundings that the camera can see. Um, we can tailor the solution and have these awesome things, but each environment at each client site is going to be so vastly different. We got to be able to, you know, get in, realize what's wrong with it. As, as uh, Megan was just calling out, um, the garage door actually had a metal grate at the bottom, like a drainage grate, and that kept on pinging. And we were, we we're sitting here going like, why, why are we getting these, these high temperatures? Uh, and so we were working on all these configuration items. And finally we saw it in the camera, that little grate that, that, it, that the camera kept on capturing. So these environmental, um, I guess variables we see uh, is different in every single every single client, and identifying, adapting, and overcoming those is something that we've become really, really good at. Uh, it's actually uh, for these advanced thermal cameras. Uh, once you understand the configuration model behind it, it's super easy to make a clear and concise. Uh, we'll call it scanning zone or frame zone um, that that you can capture these things without you know interfering with some of these inter inter environmental uh, variables that we see. So that's pretty much the biggest uh, di challenge we have, you know, in setting up and then deploying all these things is that each each zone, each area we set up in is so vastly different. And uh, it's just, just going to be a constant challenge every time to identify those things and, and fix them before, uh, you know, we, we get we get out there and, and turn it into production. Perfect. Okay, um, so I think it just kind of helps, but like uh, the net net is you have a lot of customers. It's a busy season over the summer, which is you know kind of good, you know. And then people are social distancing and wearing their masks. Um, I think these were early on before the mask mandate was in place and things of that sort. But uh, we've adapted it. And we've learned. We've learned the same thing. Like it, these cameras work best because they do. It's not doing facial recognition to say like who is this person, what are they doing. It's more capturing this is a person, this is their face, and then it looks for the highest point of temperature on their face to kind of get an accurate reading. Um, okay, uh, I think, you know, this is just like a call out when you look at the data, it, it's it's pretty exciting for us to put something in place. You know, I, I we've done it for small offices and you have like 20 or 50 people coming in and then you kind of get some gists and trends. But, you know, for Ignite, when we had initially put these in over the summers, there'd be like peak days where, again, it's not 10,000 unique individuals, but it, it was scanning 10,000 times, right? And that's something that as a, as a human going like, you know, person to person with a thermometer in their, in their you know, face would be really obtrusive. No one's going to want to come to a place like that. So the whole point of the technology we put in place was try to make it a little bit more discreet, um, but still trying to get some data to see what's going on so you can make better decisions for how to, how to run your business and, and kind of adjust accordingly. But uh, we did some, see some high, high peaks of 10,000 scans a day, which I thought was, you know, just kind of a nice data. You know, it can do this at scale. And this is just one location. So if you if you kind of relate that to a larger, you know, global chain, like you're you're talking about hundreds of thousands of scans um, a day, which is like a, a, the connected platform can kind of ingest all that data and make sense out of it. All right, uh, I did pull recently some some stats over the last three weeks. Just you know, we are in December; it's the holiday season. We know things are slowing down. We know, unfortunately, COVID is you know kind of ticking up, and hopefully the vaccines are on the horizon shortly. But it'll take some time to roll out. So same deal, you know, we are we are down a little bit. So, uh, you know, just kind of, I don't know if you want to elaborate just on the business side or things that are on your mind going into this holiday season, or even just, you know, how did how did your business perform? And then what's going on just trending at a high level, less about the cameras, just but more about where are you guys today? And how are things looking? Yeah, a couple of learned behaviors here. Uh, you know, over the last month in Ohio, we've had um, more of a stay at home in encouragement, if you will, stay at home guidance issued. It's not, it's not an absolute, not a mandate, but it's a, a certainly strong worded discussion was had. 
Um, and so a lot of our customers both have started to stay home uh, more, uh, taking better advantage of deliveries, um, picking up our beer at uh, grocery stores and things of that nature. Uh, but also we're seeing a lot more customers staying at their table. Before, Ilya, you and I would walk up, order a beer together. And that way you look at the menu, we talk about what are you ordering? What are you trying? What did you like? We're seeing a lot more people, one person is going up and ordering that beer. And where we have the camera positioned, uh, that also is contributing to fewer and fewer scans. So uh, yeah, our, our traffic is down. Um, we're unique and quite thankful. November is the first month where we have had a decrease versus 2019. Every other month we've had uh, substantial growth relative to prior years. So we are the outlier, if you will. Um, <clears throat> and you know, no small part to all of our efforts on the COVID efforts. Um, we are the outlier in having a, a good, safe environment where people have been coming and coming in at a greater frequency than last year. So we've benefited from those items. Um, but uh, November was certainly things started to slow down. December's gotten a lot slower and uh, expect that to even continue through. You know, normally we'd have a holiday parties and things of that nature. Friday, Saturday nights would be really busy. Um, and also you have to be home before 10 o'clock. Uh, so, you know, we're kicking people out at 9.50 because you're not allowed to be on their property at 10 o'clock uh, with the new orders for restaurants and bars and things of that nature. So uh, a little bit of a different environment. <clears throat> we have less people coming out and uh, it just makes for a strange world. So, gotcha. Well, we hope uh, we hope that people are gonna, you know, hopefully extend. I think everyone's, you know, facing this, and then the 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 restaurant market is like to go, and you know, like kind of. I know you guys are doing some canning and you know making it available. So, looking at new things that you probably weren't looking at at the beginning of twenty twenty. Um, all right. So just moving on. You know, I think uh, hopefully that's just helpful, just to kind of show the data that's coming off the technology. Um, if we kind of move to the next kind of batch of slides here, uh, I think this is just an example of the mobile app. You know, it just illustrates <clears throat> you can pull it up at any time. We've, we've kind of covered that. It, it's not tracking, you know, people or anything like that. Maybe Megan and, and, and Michael, just some quick thoughts on, you know, oftentimes when we're talking to clients, they're concerned about the big brother effect um, and, you know, privacy and things of that sort. What, any guest reactions or employee reactions when you were installing this type of uh, technology? Well, uh, just to touch base on the, the mobile functionality, there, there are a few couple, there were a couple of tenants of us starting our business, you know, half dozen, four years ago. Uh, that was, how do we make beer make a difference in our community? How do we get back to, uh, to the marketplace that we have the privilege of serving? Um, how do we make that economic development, the charitable uh, impact, all of those things? Um, one of them was, one of the principles was, we do not want to continue to brew a beer that our customers do not love. Uh, even if we love a beer, we're not brewing it. And then uh, a third table stake was, how do we challenge ourselves with the technology and challenge ourselves to, to run a very good company? And that, that technology question that, that was constantly circulated and continues to be circulated, if we can't manage our business from our phones, could we be doing something better? And that was one of the big things with this insight uh, solution that was attractive to us is getting those mobile alerts and being able to react real time uh, wherever we are so that we do not have to physically be in that tap room space. So um, Megan, if you wanna to touch on customer reactions that, that you heard. Yeah, the, the customers seemed really uh, impressed with the capability, uh, surprised maybe that somebody of our size had this technology <clears> and were that forward thinking, trying to, to stay ahead of it and putting technology in instead of, you know, handwritten signs and somebody walking around with a thermometer. Um, but yeah, the customers have been really excited. In fact, when we were piloting it and really testing it out, we had a handful of customers who were just eager lining up. They just kept wanting to walk in. They would just, it was like a parade through the door because <laughs> they were so excited to be a part of it. So staff and customers, the, the reaction has been very, very positive. Cool. That's good. And I think that's an again, important note. If you, if we go to the next slide, I, I just injected something from our own insight uh, deployment where we've, we've deployed to, I think it's 11 offices in the U S and Canada. And we had the same reaction where people were like, all right, we're going to do this. How are people going to feel? But it, the, you know, we have essential businesses that are shipping products to our, our partners and our clients like yourselves to kind of keep them going. 
Um, so they'd been open the whole time as well. And we want to be cautious with our own teammates. You know, how do we do this safely? So we've deployed thermal cameras in our larger facilities, um, as well as these kiosks and some of the smaller ones. Um, but we've had the same type of uh, supporting. Like they feel more comfortable. They're excited that Insight's doing this. It makes it shows that you care. So it actually has the opposite effect of like, hey, people are spying on us and, and kind of dealing with privacy. It's It's more of oh, our company cares and they're trying to take efforts to keep us safe. And we'll learn together, you know, how effective this is one piece of the puzzle. Um, but, uh, yep, we've seen that this and, uh, kind of same feedback. And to add into that, Ilya, the comments we actually received is how come this isn't in our schools? How come the school buildings don't have this in the front door? How come, you know, the local grocery store, retail, you know, larger retailers, sporting events, why, why isn't this being uh, deployed at a higher level? So um, it, it was to Megan's point, us being as small as we are and having this technology deployed adds that additional level of safety and confidence in the efforts we're taking. So, yep. And rest assured, we are working in our in our motion to kind of get this deployed into certain school districts. And uh, we've had lots of those conversations. It actually stemmed from like you know amusement parks to hospitals to uh, large sports facilities. So we're we're very actively. Paul, I don't know if you have any, uh, you know, been doing any deployments in that space uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the the real big focus right now is just because of um, uh, think about the warehousing, the warehouse stores. Of course, Insight has warehouses as well. Um, the the importance of being able to keep those employees safe because if you have a shift go down. You literally aren't shipping food, products, and services out, um, and you literally are impacting, um, it could be hundreds of thousands of people, depending on the distribution centers, right? So we've seen a huge spike in distribution centers, um, wanting to understand all about that technology um, and, and all of those things. You've probably seen the the Amazons of the world say, uh, and those commercials out there, right? But now we're able to actually supply that whole robust solution for those type of organizations um, and be able to deliver that, not just for the safety of their employees, but to keep their operations running because it's critical to everything we're going through together. Yep. And I've, we've seen that. And I know Jake's been helping out with uh, a bunch of uh, different clients as well to get this deployed and, and kind of get it going, get it configured in, in these various locations that we talked about. So why don't we actually shift the conversation a little bit more to the deployment and, and kind of just uh, show the, the the loose framework for how we start this, you know, with Ignite as an example. But when you scale it to multiple locations and different regions, you know, it is quite of a and, and really trying to configure it. So I'm not going to lie. This is uh, my I told you I love playing with technology, but my next favorite job is drawing stick figures, you know, because I kind of call it my stick figuring things out uh, process. Um, but this is the brewery that you guys now have a sense for and where we started, right? We kind of had an idea. We have some mutual friends where we were chatting and I was explaining what we were doing early into COVID with some of this technology for thermal cameras and contact tracing. And we said, hey, it might make sense to do in, in the brewery. Um, and then it's just trying to learn, all right, what is the people flow, right? Like it really comes down to not just beer flow, right? How, where, where, where do I get my beer, which is an important aspect in this case. Well, how are the people coming and going? Where are they coming and going? And then what's the flow for, of information and the data? Like we want to make sure that we're not sending it to people. You know, it is sensitive. So we're, we're taking every precaution to make sure only the right people have access to it. So you guys can then kick off your, your business process. So looking at the brewery, we had people coming in one of those large main entrance garage doors. That's where they order their beer. So we figured that makes the most sense to put your camera there. Um, the camera also requires a calibration box so you get more accurate readings um, so that it's not just like everyone registering a slightly, you know, really ridiculous temperature. There are some environmental concerns there, but there's kind of two components. Um, and then we map out the workflow of like who gets the emails and the, the alerts when something does happen. And that is, you know, Megan and Michael you, as partners at the brewery, that was kind of your, your job is let's see what's going on. It might be overwhelming. We might have thousands of people or they might not work, but it really, as we showed, it's only a, a handful over, you know, each week you might get a couple that you're dealing with and trying to figure out, all right, how are things trending? So we start, start with this. Let's just sketch it out. We bring in our team. Uh, if we go to the next slide. It'll explain, all right, let's take that conceptual drawing and we do a site a site survey. So Paul and, and Jake, if you guys want to kind of elaborate what, what we did here and how that works, I think it'd be helpful for other organizations to understand. 
Yeah, I, I can go ahead and kind of take it and and uh, and start it off. So once we once we understand the you know the the problem that, that that we're facing here was how do we get people in and out safely into the brewery? Is I need to my team takes it back and we figure out what what devices, what IoT devices are tailored best to meet this solution. Um, and for Ignite, we decided to go with uh, a Dell Dell Gateway, which is uh, basically the powerhouse behind everything. It sends uh, all the thermal data and all the data captured from the camera up into the cloud. Um, Microsoft Azure does its computations up there and it'll send it back, you know, instantly back down into our, our um, inside built connected platform. Um, we went with a bull-eyed advanced thermal camera was just because the, the, the large area that we're looking to scan of the, of, of the entrance of the brewery, uh, we needed a camera with the ability to scan up to 30 people at once as they're coming up. Luckily, Ignite did such a great job that they had the, the social distancing. We don't utilize that full power of 30 people at once, but it does have the ability that you can see out into the patio and you can, it, the camera's always looking, always trying to scan and, and you know, make sure that everyone's safe at, at single time. So once we once we build that uh, build of materials, I guess you'd say we kind of we we then we take it we we do a remote site survey uh, with the team. So we basically we ask uh, somebody from Ignite to to get on the on the horn with us, and we look at different spots and we try to pick out which is the exact spot we would like the camera to be in. You know, make sure that all the cabling is run um, or, or need it. If it does need it, you know, that that's when we, we turn it over to the Paul's team. Um, and you know, they'll, they'll come in, they'll come in and, and assist and make sure that, yep, we need X amount of feet of cabling, X amount of feet of ethernet. Um, and we just make sure everything's set and, and ready to go, um, before Paul's team actually gets on. And I'll turn it over to Paul to kind of discuss, you know, the actual on-site deployment of that, how he goes about setting up the camera, working with us to, to configure it. So I'll look, Turn it over to you, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Um, so, so the nice part about that diagram is being able to do a piece of that virtually um, and not have to continuously come on site um, and and take a look at the environments. Um, so, so we knew that this environment had some unique um, functionality with garage doors, hot concrete, and all those type of things. Um, and, and the nice thing is, and you can see the install here, we did end up creating a custom mount for this um, because. Um, of the the unique place of and the and the business flow of where the clients come in to order beer, how it actually goes through, um, and those type of things. Typically, what you see is um, the, even the process is a little bit easier where we're actually. Um, able to do everything remote, not have to build custom things, install on the wall. But these cameras are, I'll, I'll say, um, they have some very specific tolerances. Um, so the upper left-hand side of this screen shows that little calibration box. Um, the camera, that has to be mounted within six inches um, for that camera to be able to, to have that calibration box. So, so there's some very tight tolerances to this. Um, the beautiful thing is we've already got all those tolerances. We know where those things go. We know how to actually do those installs. So by the time we get on site, um, do the install, um, that process is relatively smooth. Um, it's all been planned, laid out. The client's been spoken to, actually signed off on it. Yeah, we understand where this is going, where that's going. And as you can see, um, we'll actually talk about, are we mounting things into concrete, into wood? Um, in, and are we mounting it into the ceiling? All of that's pre-done so that when we show up, it's a, it should be like a three to four hour install. Then you get up to testing. You make sure all your equipment's powered on. Um, make sure all of the devices are communicating. Um, and then wrap everything up. Um, and then we work remotely with the development teams to make sure the app's working. And then we actually do some of that training with the client that says, here's what we should be doing. Um, are you seeing this in the app? Um, and do all of those testings before we go off site as well. Perfect. And yeah, I think. Uh that it's a custom, you know, the mount, uh, I think Michael, you had, you wanted to make it look industrial and Paul is kind of our, our Tim Allen, our handyman that uh, can kind of whip things together. So uh, it is a full team effort, you know, from an idea to actually deploying it to getting it to fit in. So it doesn't stick out. And in this case, uh, I think it's actually over Megan's shoulder in the background is kind of the calibration box and the camera. Yeah. Yeah, and Perfect. Up the left side. And we have right behind on Megan, on the right side of Megan's screen is, is our, oh, one of the COVID panels, if you will. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's up there. So we had to get up and out 
<clears throat> up and above the COVID panel to, to shoot down. But where you guys chose to position it, where we discussed and everything else, it's super discreet. Um, so that there's a lot of people that are completely unaware that it's even there. Which, there it is. I brought the hey. yeah. There it is. Yeah. Sticking over the, the curtain there. I thought you guys were going to decorate it for the holidays. So. You know, I don't think they called Santa Cap would look good over there. Back on. <laughs> I don't know, but Santa Camp might be good. It also might cause technical issues with it. Yeah, I don't want to like that. But, you know, they broke us. Uh, um, all right. So, yeah, so it does take a lot. It's appreciated, Paul, going on site. I think often, you know, forgotten is like all the hard work required to actually deploy things and then do that at scale. Um, Okay, uh, moving along, just to, you know, in the spirit of time. Uh, I think this is an example of the view from the camera, and then uh, we've kind of talked about it. So this is behind Megan, and you can kind of see it's pointed down at specific angles. So it has a calibration box and frame. It's getting over your your kind of COVID uh, uh, shields there for your employees and your guests, and then it can kind of still pick up, you know, what's going on. So this is the actual view from the camera. Um, again, it can screen multiple people at a time. It can do that discreetly. Uh, it can do that while they're wearing masks. Uh, one of the lessons learned, I think, as we've learned, you know, Jake's wearing his hat. You know, when people have hats, if they're dark hats and they're wearing sunglasses, there's sometimes you do have to ask them to take that stuff off. And we've done that in our own facilities. It's like, you know, please, please take a moment where it's part of the process come through our front entrance, look up, you know, at the camera so it gets a good and accurate reading. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, so there is some training and coaching that often go into this as, as well as the people process, not just the technology. And then at the end of the day, we, we've talked about the alerts and we'll set up the system to kind of make sure that uh, we'll work with uh, Mike and Megan in this case, but other clients, like where, who's getting notified, who has access to what, you know, do you just need an FYI, this happened, and then that kicks off a flow, or who has access to our connected platform to kind of see what's going on, that they can all be restricted as needed. Um, so that's, that's kind of the gist of what we've in, installed. So looking forward, you know, I think it's, Probably not the year we all had, you know, at the start of it, thought we were going to get into. Um, I guess we could start with Ignite. You know, what's on your mind? I think I've heard that you've, you've built a kitchen recently and you're, you're going to start serving food and, and do things of that sort to extend your business. Um, kind of what's on your mind going into 2021? Michael, I'll hand that to you. <laughs> well, just continuing to continuing to improve our processes and workflows and you know, how, how do we seek innovation in order to continue to create that good customer experience as well as do things more intelligently. So um, how, how do we make sure that we're leveraging technology to remain in compliance and where we need to um, and, and track to make sure the workflow is happening. And uh, it's just really helpful from a training standpoint, as well as uh, making sure that we know that certain parts of our building are um, not exceeding a certain temperature uh, to the positive or negative, whether too warm or too cold. Um, you know, our, our, our cold room right behind Megan there, is, you know, there's well over six figures worth of finished product ready to serve in that cooler at all times. If that gets to a bad uh, to spoilage level, that's a problem. Um, CO2 issues, uh, hand hygiene stations, making sure that we're tracking and monitoring those. So, um, you know, how do we how do we get the kitchen running? How do we get uh, our team running effectively? And how do we make better product, faster, and uh, more effectively. So uh, what else is on your plate, Megan? Uh, you know, seeing where we can integrate some of this technology in operations perspectives. We've got some equipment that tends to overheat. So, you know, putting this in the areas where that equipment is to make sure that it's got the right environment, possibly being able to incorporate it into some of the fermentation and actual beer production to see where the, the temperature monitoring can fit there. So we've got some ideas and, We'll see where it goes. Perfect. And I think Jake can hook you up. You know, he'll, he'll pull on the right partners to kind of make sure we can do that. So I think it will, we'll get back into temp sensing seems to make sense. And then the, the CO2 and even hand hygiene, you know, does make sense. Uh, so we'll, we'll be exploring that on our roadmap, what makes sense, how we can integrate those things, how we can kind of pull the data together, um, which is perfect. Um, other things, maybe just to elaborate, Jake or, or Paul, anything on, on your minds? like. Uh, going into 2021? 
We we have we have lots of use cases that we're working out with uh, connected platform. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you guys hit on the food safety and the beverage quality control uh, use cases that we're hitting on. We're looking at industrial monitoring. Um, we have contact tracing use cases. We have we have a wide variety of use cases that we're exploring. Um, some are, are the biggest challenge right now for us is is you know which one is 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 going to be a top priority and 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 which one do we move forward with at its we only have a small team, so we got we got a lot of work for a small team. But the, the possibilities are endless for what this connected platform can do. Um, you know, there are numer- I, I, incountable amount of IoT devices out there, all with the ability to that that needing to send data somewhere and have some kind of use in in everyday life. And our job is to bring those devices into a you know a single point of contact where we can make decisions, drive data. Um, so that's that's what we're looking at. And, you know, the, the future is exciting, but it's also like we saw with 2020, you know, it's uncertain and it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun time in 2021 to really, you know, drive home some of these awesome use cases. Yep. And, and Paul, any any, <clears throat> any thoughts for you? I was just going to add that, um, <clears throat> you know, we saw everybody shift to work from home and we shifted a lot of our business to supporting <clears throat> pardon me, our end users as they work from home, right? Um, how do we get technology in their hands? How do we improve their um, experience? Um, how do you replace defective devices and all those type of things? But as we see that vaccine roll out, what we're going to see is not everybody's going to go back to work, but a lot of people are going to go back to work, right? And it's going to be a hybrid type of environment. So now as um, businesses react um, and all of us react to that, now I'm going to be in the home and I'm going to be at work, whether it's two days here, three days there, and I'm switching things back and forth. So our business in 2019 was highly focused around um, the the experience in the office, right? Then this year, we had to switch to the experience at home. Next year, we're planning to have to do both experiences um, and then having to be able to manage um, that user experience, whether it's use of technology, applications, or those type of things. And now everybody's going to, um, let's face it, the Amazon model, everyone's going to want it right now, right now, right now, right? So how do we react and get there quickly um, is definitely some of the things we're focused on. Perfect. Um, yep. So, you know, it is a holistic package. Ther- thermal cameras is kind of maybe the start, and then we can build up other business use cases to help you guys run more effectively at Ignite. We're, we're <clears> conquering <throat> other, you know, how what's the new norm with people work from home as Paul just you know mentioned and coming back into the office when they can feel safe and we have the technology installed to help enable that. I think from an exciting aspect, we actually just launched a new partnership with a company called Microshare in regards to uh, wearable devices for contact tracing. You know, so as companies do come back, uh, we can actually outfit employees with like a wrist wearable and an armband or a lanyard. And then that'll help monitor if they do come in contact, you know, hopefully there is no spread and this does slow down and we have the vaccines, but if, if there's a, a positive uh, diagnosis or someone reports that they're not feeling well, we can actually use technology to enable them and, and, and figure out who do they come in contact with and where do they go in a facility for deep cleaning purposes. So we're continuing to bring new solutions to market, even starting at home, like a daily questionnaire for employees. And I think Mike and Megan are, are using a version of that uh, today as well. Not not our questionnaire, but like just a manual process. Everyone's dealing with this, but we have a, a questionnaire with, that you get for free. When you buy a thermal camera or a kiosk, we give you this questionnaire. It's the same set of questions to do the screening before they even come on site. But take a pause, like take your temperature. Do you have symptoms? Should you be getting on in your car and going to work? Should you be getting on the school bus, right? Like maybe maybe you shouldn't, right? And, and, and it, there's a whole series of steps. Uh, I think, you know, you guys are the celebrities, you're in the videos, I'm just the geek kind of behind the scenes. I would like to mention that, uh, Michael, we do have a tech journal, you know, that uh, we produce at Insight that kind of has a whole bunch of these case studies uh, and digs in with different clients. Michael's the star, He's, this is his front page debut, I'm going to guess. I don't know, maybe, maybe you're in a bunch of magazine front covers, but he's he's starring in our in our tech journal. Uh, this month that there's a subscription that you can subscribe to, you, you can sign up, you can get access to this, but it really has a lot of the insight offering, different partner solutions, what are people doing, what's on people's minds, some thought leadership uh, articles in computer vision, in data and AI, in cloud computing, and all of the stuff that Insight does kind of day in and day out. 
Um, so we do encourage everybody to kind of take a look. It'll be out on Monday. Uh, if you haven't got enough of Michael's uh, beautiful face, it'll be there. We can frame it. You can give it out to friends, family, anyone that uh, you think uh, might enjoy a copy of that. And I think you might sign it with your with your with a case of beer. You know, love Michael. It, you know, here's technology on us. Um, so I know what I'm getting my mom for Christmas. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I mean, just wrap. By wrapping up the call and wrapping up kind of 20, uh, 2020 in this year, you know, I, I just like to say thank you to everybody, you know, to all you guys. We worked with you uh, this year as well as many partners. You know, we can't do it without you. Um, we, we truly appreciate it. Uh, if anyone has any other closing remarks, uh, I think we kind of leave it at that. Thanks thank you, guys. Perfect. So cheers, guys. Happy holidays. And uh, we'll, we continue to work together going into the new year. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Appreciate it.